Beyond the Clef is presented by Director's Choice. Welcome to Beyond the Clef, live at TMEA 2018. I'm here with Rob Myers, and Rob is the Director of Fine Arts at Red Oak ISD. How are you doing, Rob? Rock and roll, my friend. How are you doing? <laughs> Just fine. Good. Thanks for being on the show for us. We really appreciate it. Thrilled. So I want to talk to you a little bit about just tone and hearing and listening. We've been talking off camera a little bit about sure. that. And so I'm really excited to hear what you have to say about just, let's just call it tuning for now. Okay. All right. Well, great question. And, you know, thanks for having me, man. Yeah. This is, this is a, such a great idea. Um, one of my guiding principles all throughout my career is something that um, Robert Reynolds, you know, the, the former band director at University of Michigan, now is at USC, um, would always talk about it. You know, it was it was the way that he rehearsed, and that is, it's all about the ears. You know, he would always talk to us about the ears, whether you know it's listening to another section or listening within your section or you know whatever the case may be. That's kind of been the guiding principle of how I played when I you know when I was able to play the trombone, and then um, you know also in my teaching. You know, so I, I struggled at times to. Um, put that thought press process or that methodology into practice with some of the traditional tuning aids um, that um, you know that I had utilized as you know when I was growing up like the Korg AT12 right you know like that's that's the old standby my parents got me one of those you know when I was a sophomore in high school that and the DB88 you know and I thought my world had changed right um, but I struggled, you know, as, as a player, more so obviously in college than in high school, that you know if I'm playing the third of a chord you know, why is this AT12, you know, telling me that I'm in tune, but I'm hearing all these waves, you know. So that was kind of the genesis for, you know, the, uh, the tuning CD that we put together with Alex Ruthman at Michigan and, you know, some of those things and then ultimately to the Harmony Director. Okay, so tell me a little bit more about that and, and what you did when you were in rehearsals and whatnot to try to get your uh, uh, kids to there. Walk me through that process because that's not just a one day all of a sudden you start doing that. Yeah, no, no. That's a long term process. Yeah, that's a good point. It's a, you know, um, I, I kind of always say that the more you use the Harmony Director, the less you use the Harmony Director because you have an incredible initial investment and, um, you know, kind of a, a personal commitment, if you will to teaching the kids how to listen and adjust on their own. Um, so in essence, the more that you do that at the beginning and things of that nature, the less you're gonna to have to do it because it kind of takes over the rehearsal. Now, I say personal investment because it's not, it's not necessarily the most comfortable thing to be able to get stand in front of your kids and tell them, you know, without the aid of something visual, to say, you know, um, you know, plus minus things of that nature. You're, 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 you're sharp, you're flat. I mean, that, that can be tough, you know, specifically when it's not our, our primary instrument. You know, like as a trombonist, it's not the easiest thing for me to tell a piccolo player, you know, whether they're, they're sharp or flat. Um, but that just comes with practice, you know, and, I, and again, that individual investment and commitment for the kids to be able to listen. Does that, does that answer your question? Or? Absolutely, okay. absolutely. Now, tell me more about the Harmony Director. Of course, okay. we're talking about the Yamana, Yamaha Harmony Director. Yes, sir. It's, it's HD current. 200. Okay, that's this current form. And, yes, sir. And you were instrumental in the start of the first version of that. Is that correct? Well, um, not, not, not so much instrumental, my friend, as um, an advocate for. Um, sure. So, uh, while at Michigan, you know, I had the benefit of... Um, you know, being in the same hallway as Don Sinta's studio, you know, and you know, world famous saxophone teacher, of course. And his students would always be playing scales or arpeggios or some permutation of an exercise with this drone going, you know, and it was usually a, a justly tuned perfect fifth or a justly tuned major triad. And I was like, well, wh where's that coming from? You know, like, what is that? Well, as I understand it, and, you know, memory's malleable, so I may have forgotten a bit, but I. I understood that uh, Yamaha came out with an original version of that many, many decades ago, and that it just didn't take off, but uh, Mr. Sinta got one of those, and that's what he was using in his room. So it was actually at Midwest, um, I think in 2000 or 2001, just when I had started teaching, I saw the HD100, which was the first iteration to me of the Harmony Director, and you know, I started talking to the guys, and I saw some... Um, some videos of some uh, Japanese school ensembles using it and what they're doing. I was like, well, this this seems right. You know, this seems this seems so much more capable than you know an E flat zero to E flat three justly tuned um, CD. You know, with uh, you know for a minute and a half, and just just the capabilities that it was able to do for me to be able to showcase a chord, you know, in pure temperament as opposed to equal temperament and show the kids what I was talking about. I mean, it you know it eventually took over. Now, the inter the interface of the HD one hundred. Um, was not 
it was not a terribly user-friendly uh, interface, if you will. Um, the next iteration, the HD 200, the current um, form. The current form, yes, my friend, uh, is 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 awesome. You know, it has an LCD screen in front of you that tells you the adjustments, and it's all very clearly and, and intelligently laid out in four quadrants. You know, including our favorite, the metronome. Um, and it, you know, it just allows for you to talk about anything that you're talking about in your rehearsal. Allows for you to provide an oral image for what you're talking about, and we know there's no better way to teach. Okay. Does that? So, yeah, that, okay. that's really great. Um, okay. Tell me about if. Say I'm a band director, never used the harmony director before. Yeah. What? Uh, how do I start? Okay. How, how do yeah. I learn about yeah, it? Yeah, because no, maybe right. a manual is not going to tell me. Yeah. What you're the telling. The manual is not going to tell you. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. I've I mean, read the manual. Yeah, yeah. It's or parts not of it. So I guess the first thing do, to do would be to go to ye old YouTube. You know, and there's uh, there's a couple of videos on there that are going to help. There's one that uh, Amanda Drinkwater, Mike Brown, and myself did. That's about 17 minutes long. Um, the Yamaha guys came over to. Uh, to Flower Mound, and we worked on um, just putting together, you know, kind of a how-to, you know. So it goes through all that. And what but, we'll try to do is we'll try to link that video okay, in our yeah, yeah. in our show notes. Okay, great. And then, um, yeah, that's a great idea. Now it is 17 minutes, so there's an investment in that, but it kind of gives you a really great overview. And then there's some, some additional Japanese videos that showcase some some usage of it that that are very, I think maybe by uh, Bravo or Brain Publications that um, also have some you know great information. But I would start there. And then um, I would, um, either singing or playing, I would just start um, matching tones on the harmony director myself, you know, so I would just, so that I could isolate and just start hearing exactly what the harmony director can do, just like play a perfect fifth, you know, like play a B flat and an F, right, or, you know, whatever the case may be. And, uh, you know, if, 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 and, um, and then just start playing chords and, and scales, things of, of that nature, trying to lock things in. Again, the personal investment happens from the individual and until you are comfortable doing that it's not going to happen now I think another you know I was such a good pianist at Michigan I, I, I liked the beginner class so much I took it twice so you know it's not it's not necessary hey, I was really good at uh, the science <laughs> of nutrition one of my basics yeah, class right. yeah. I was so good at I took yeah. that one twice yeah, yeah. So. I could I could go through a list but we'll just stop with the <laughs> um, but um, I think the other reticence for people to incorporate that into rehearsal is I don't have skills as a pianist, you know? And that's, it, it doesn't matter. I mean, as long as you can play three notes, you know, if you could play a triad, put it in auto mode, play the triad, it, it'll automatically go into pure temperament for you. You know, so it's it's really simple. Now, of course, you can also put the uh, the keyboard in an equal temperament, you know, your, your typical temperament, um, which, you know, certainly can showcase the differences in, in waves. But, um, I, you know, 99.9% .9 of the time, I'd keep it in pure. Because anything, any exercise that you're doing, you can do in a pure temper just around the tonic note. I also tend to like the, you know, you're in rehearsal, I always feel like when you're up on the podium, sometimes your brain is on so many different things, yeah. and I always look over at my assistant when I'm like doing transposition and the kids are looking at me like yeah. this or yeah. like this, yeah. and, and I said the wrong way or did yeah. something because I'm just confused. Again, yeah. I love that just I can push just a button. push a button, hit yeah, an E flat, and hit the thing yeah. out, and put the chord down, and yeah. the horns, you know, four parts. I don't have to really go into that. It takes a little bit less time for my mental capacity. I can focus on a few other yeah. things. Pre pre first cup of coffee, you know, 6 a.m., 7, <laughs> 7 a.m., French horn section, I'll just put it in F and read the score. Yeah. You know? yeah. Or, or those times times when you have uh, beginner clarinet, yeah. horn, and French horn, uh, a saxophone Alto class sax. all the same yeah. time, it just helps a little bit at the end of the day. You yeah. know, after they came in from gym, you don't want well, to have to deal with man, that. It's, it's important that you bring that up because I think the earlier you start this with students, the more similar it's going to be for them. You know, the more, like, this is just the way we do band, you know. So when I was teaching um, beginner low brass, you know, I'd probably start in week seven or eight you know, just letting the kids hear what the harmony director is, because you know, starting much earlier than that, you're you're concerned about you know the, how the face looks right, and, you know, and how you know how the air column is, and you know, you want to get all of that correct first, and then start the ear training. But you know, if kids are taught to not have waves when they play, you know, it's it's just by bad habits and you know other other components that teach us to play with waves. A good friend of both of ours, uh, Alan Hanna, let's make sure that he's not around to hear us say anything nice about him, but he had, uh, he really opened my eyes. He was I was asking about how did he conceptualize and talk about uh, trombone positions sure. and where they are and all that stuff. And he said, I 
never, ever mentioned this is about where it's at or need right. to go here or here. Right. He always said he would just put a, a pitch down and they had to match that pitch. And so what was really interesting, he would go on and put, uh, uh, an, a, let's say, uh, D on there. Uh, and then he would dial it down to where it was 40 cents flat. And then they would have to just match. That's yep. just how they learned how to do the yep. trombone. Yep. So thanks Well, for that's, I mean, we've got the, we've got the largest skill set, you know, with our ears, you know, there's nothing better than our ears, you know, and I, I equate it to teach you to string instrument, you know, like you're not gonna, of course, you know, sometimes we could put down tape or things of that nature if need be, but you, um, I mean, ultimately the students need to use their ears, right? I mean, that's how you play those instruments, you know, they don't have the luxury of pushing down buttons or keys or things of that nature. It's the same thing with teaching the trombone, right? You know, you've just got this, this piece of pipe that you just need to, to learn to use your ears. Okay, now let's go back to me. I've been using the Harmony Director to, I'd say, moderate to low effectiveness. Okay. How do I develop my skills as a director and try to get better at using the Harmony Director? It, man, that's a great question. It, you know, it's like, it's the Nike slogan, just do it, okay? So um, anything that you're doing right now in your ensemble, you can adapt to the Harmony Director. You know, so for example, like if, if you're doing, uh, if you're doing um, F Remington descending, Okay, I like to put on a B-flat major triad or a B-flat or, or, or B perfect fifth because what you're working is intervals five to one, right? So you're, you've got, you're picking up your five, you're picking up your three, and you're picking up your one. And my sense is if you know, kids can hear five, three, and one, you know, you're probably 85 to 90% there for most cadence points or anything that you're doing in your music, right? And then if you're doing um, an F Remington ascending, you just, I'd put it on an F triad, F A C or F and C. And, um, then you're working the same. You're working the same intervals, right? You're working one to five. You know, or if you're doing Chickowitz exercises, that start on an F. You know, do it around a B flat. If you're doing Clark exercises, you know, do it around the key area that it exists in. So really, anything that you're doing right now is infinitely adaptable to the harmony direct. You just need to do it and trust that it's going to add in an additional component um, for the kids and their responsibility and their onus within the ensemble. So they're not necessarily just going through the. Yes, my face is set, the air is consistent, you know, you know, all of those great techniques that we know, but they're also utilizing their ears to match their neighbors, to match the harmony directors, to match within the ensemble, which, of course, we use those fundamentals to make the bridge into our music, and that's an automatic bridge. Okay. Now, our listeners are not just band, but they're also orchestra and choir. Yes, sir. Here's a director of fine arts question yeah, for yeah, you. Yeah, good, good, good. good. <laughs> How, have you seen uh, other people using this in, in other yes. uh, content areas, yeah. and, and how, do the, how effective is that? Yeah, it's very effective. Uh, uh, very prominent. I mean, I know I'm just, I'm saying, hey, no, no, it's, it's music. A good, no, no, it's a good, no, it's a terrific question. I've been too specific on the winds. You're, it's a great question. Um, there are some very fine orchestras um, in, the, uh, in the Metroplex that are using the harmony director. You know, they'll use it a lot in their music, um, you know, for, for, uh, for melodies and then for, uh, for, harmonic, uh, for harmonic moments. Moments, but they also use it for finger patterns, you know, because finger, finger patterns are just scales, right? You know, so they're using that for the for the just intonation component. Um, as far as tuning with the harmony director, that's a little bit different of an animal, depending on the you know the the the, the temperament that you're using to tune. Um, it's certainly malleable, but I think I find that uh, most orchestras using it for tuning are just doing a solitary note. It's more um, a rehearsal device um, for. The, uh, for the ensemble, you know, when you're working on music. And then for choir, I think it's it's the perfect device, right? Because it, it seems yeah, a direct correlation yeah, yeah. there. Yeah, because, you know, as instrumentalists, you know, that's how we start, right? I mean, that's, you know, if you could sing it, you're gonna most likely to be able to play it. If you don't internalize it, it's not gonna happen. So um, for choirs, I think what it does is it gets rid of democracy a little bit in the, in, in the rehearsal, um, which I think is advantageous at times. Uh, for some of your more complex harmonies, if you will. We definitely don't have a democracy in my rehearsal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Benevolent it... democracy is what you're talking about. Yeah. <laughs> sure, sure. That's one way to put it. Exactly. Well, let me ask you about a personal problem that I, I have. Okay. Um, so it, when I uh, am tuning, and I'm especially up on the podium, or if I walk around in a certain area, uh, and I have somebody that's really close, particularly I find this on flute or maybe a clarinet, it's really close. I can't tell if they're flat or sharp doesn't or whatever they are. Uh, how do, you, how yeah. do you handle that? It doesn't matter. You get rid of the waves. Yeah. That's all that matters. Yeah. And that's- Change something. Yeah, and that's, you know, man, I'm really glad you asked that because that goes back to that um, individual fear, if you were, will, you know, of, of the director uh, in that I'm gonna look foolish if I can't identify sharp or flat. It doesn't matter. 
you know, identify faster or slower waves. All of us can hear that. If the waves are getting faster, go the opposite direction. You know, um, slow the waves down until there are no waves. You know, waves are good for surfing. You know, so you know, just make the kids laugh or whatever. You know, um, like you can also showcase that, my friend, on the Harmony Director, where where the 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 pitch is actually adjustable, right? So, right. like you were talking with Mr. Hanna when he does that forty cents changing of you know whatever note he's choosing, you know, and and acclimating the the trombone class. It's the same thing with kids, you know, just. If they can hear waves, you're fine. You'll, you, they'll get there. It just doesn't matter, in my opinion. Any recommendations on actual certain speaker equipment? I have mine patched through to my yeah. uh, larger speakers that are up high, Great. so that I don't have to, the, any other suggestions you can get about areas of position. The important thing that you said there is the plural of speaker. You know that you have two speakers. I find that having two speakers is much more advantageous to a large ensemble as opposed to just having one speaker. The fidelity is improved, you know, and it allows the kids to hear better. I'm a huge fan of powered QSC speakers. Um, I think that I have two of them. They're fantastic. Yeah, dude. Super so you powerful. Have, yeah, you have the K series. Yeah, yeah, dude. They're I love them. I my think it's, my principals come down all the time, and I love them for it. But they yeah. come down all the time. They're like, hey, can we use this in the gym yeah, again? Yeah, totally. Yeah, yeah. And, and so I'm a, I'm a huge fan of those. Um, I think they're very durable, really easy to use. Of course, there's some great passive systems as well. But I've just I've had really good luck with those K series and the QSCs. Super easy. Yeah. What about when you're on the road and uh, do, when you were doing a contest or whatnot? Yeah. Did you bring it all along with you if they didn't have that set up? Yeah, or? man, that's a great question. So, you know, when I started back, you know, late 90s, I would actually, I, there was a great pair of Bose powered speakers, like a Cinemate, like a really early, and I would just use the tuning CD, right, and run them through there. Um, but, um, you know, nowadays when I'm on the road, you know, I find that people use the cubes pretty effectively, you know, uh, particularly in a, a sectional setting. Um, the Alessis does a pretty good job, you know, that rollable, portable speaker, I think, does a pretty good job. But, you know, ultimately, anytime you can run two speakers as opposed to one, you know, I think the fidelity is going to matter. And fidelity matters a lot, you know. So my, my suggestion would be to spend as much money you, you, as you can on a good powered speaker or you know good passive system. To you can't just down. rely on the speaker in no, the machine. No, it's just not. It's, it, it's not loud enough, no. but it's also pointing the wrong way. Yeah. It's not. It's yeah. not designed for that. No, it's. You know, I think if, <clears throat> as an individual, when you're working with it, you know, like we were talking about, that might work. You know, particularly if you're singing, but. Um, as as far as an ensemble setting, I don't I don't think it has the the power you need. Great, yeah. great. What about when you don't have the harmony director? Man, I I think tonal energy is terrific, right? I mean, the stuff that they've done with that, you know, that that blue line and being evaluate what they're doing there is terrific. I am less familiar with that because I I just teach with the harmony director, yeah. you know. Um, but um, I think you know, for what is it, four or five bucks right now? You know, I mean, I three ninety nine, I think. Dude, I can't think of something better than that. I mean, it's unbelievable. It does everything that you absolutely need in, in your app. You know, so run that through the speakers. You know, through the through the headphones out, or if you're the lucky owner of an iPhone that chose to go with the Thunderbolt cable, you know, just run it through the Thunderbolt. Yada yada yada. Um, but uh, I, I've ordered about it's lightning. Sorry. Lightning. Yeah, I've yeah. ordered about a thousand of those yeah. little dongles yeah, yeah, to exactly. go. Just yeah. to, I'm duct taping them to yeah. all of my yeah. cables everywhere. Yeah. yeah. Here's your twenty nine ninety nine. Thank you, Apple. Yeah. yeah. Right. Exactly. <laughs> so yeah. So tonal tonal energy is terrific. You know, um, I I just for me in the ensemble setting and you know tonal energy came out kind of towards the latter part of my you know teaching career in, in Louisville, um, but. Um, I think I think it's it's just absolutely terrific, you know. I mean, it's so much better than many of the other options out there. Rob so. Myers, smart guy. Learned a lot from you today. Thank you, my friend. It's Can't been a wait. lot of fun. Thanks for being on the program. We're gonna have to get you on again soon. All right, brother. Thank you. All right, thank you. Uh, thanks for joining us on Beyond the Clef. Thanks for joining us for this episode of Beyond the Clef. For more great content, subscribe on our website at beyondthecleft.com, and be sure to follow us on YouTube, iTunes, SoundCloud, and Facebook.